about like, what do you do when somebody says, hey, I want to join your business and I don't have the money? And, you know, you have to kind of qualify that objection and say, hey, look, is it that you really don't have the money, but you do want to get started? Or is it that you just really don't want to do it? You know, you don't know how to tell me, you know, that you don't want to do it. You know, just shoot me straight. And if they say to you, no, I really, um, you got that shirt too, but it was too small. Hilarious. If you qualify the fact that they really do want to get started and they say, no, listen, I really do. I don't have the money, but I really do want to join your business. You say, okay, cool. Here's the deal. I am willing to work with you, but if at any point in time you don't do what I tell you to do, I'm going to have to cut the ties and we're not going to be able to work together because I'm looking for people that are absolutely serious. Are you absolutely serious? When you get them dialed into, yes, I'm absolutely serious. I really do want to work with you. I do want to join your business. I love it. I just don't have the money. What you're going to do is you are going to put them to work. And this is where you guys are missing it. A lot of you guys, when they say they don't have the money, you're like, okay, well, cool. When do you think you'll have the money? And you keep playing this cat and mouse game trying to wait till they come up with the money, which is going to be never, right? Uh, because most of the time, what you know, they, they probably could get access to the money. I'm one of those people who believes that most people, they find the money for the things that they want. Like if they want to go at drinking, they've got the money for that, right? If they want to buy cigarettes, they've got money for that. If they want to go get a new tattoo or more piercings, they've got money for that. And when it comes time to start a home-based business, all of a sudden they don't have money for that, right? So I'm not one that really buys into this thing that they don't have the money. But if you're not careful, you're going to get into a game of chase. If you start to do this thing where you're like, hey, well, when do you think you might have the money? And then, you know, like a week passes and two weeks and three weeks passes and you're still telling your upline, oh, they're going to do it. They just don't have the money yet. Guess what? They're not going to do it. You've lost them. Done deal. It's over. You might as well just strike them off your list. So here's what I want you to do is whenever somebody says, yes, I really do want to do the business. I don't have the money, but I'm all in. Then what you need to do at that point in time is say, awesome. Welcome aboard. It's good to have you on the team. Go ahead and do a welcome call with an upline leader, and then I want you to put them to work doing some homework. Here's the first thing that you're going to do. You're going to you know, make sure that you got them off the fence and say, hey, I don't want to waste your time. I certainly don't uh, want to waste mine, so I need to know if you're ready to do some homework. They say that they are. Here's what you're going to do. Write down these words uh, if you're taking notes, and hopefully you are. Pre-launch their business. You're going to pre-launch their business. You're going to treat them as if they're already on board, okay? The first thing that you want to do is to say, all right, I need a list of goals. That's the first homework that you want from this individual. When you, when you get, yeah, start that power leg. That's right, Elias. When you get that list of goals, here's what's happening. Psychologically, you're drawing the dream out of this new person, right? Like they've not made that financial commitment because they're still a little bit afraid. They're not willing to put up the, the capital just yet. But when you get the homework going and they start to dream build and you say, hey, I want you to write down your list of goals. What is it that we're playing for? Number one, it shows that you're really interested in them and what they want to accomplish, that you're not just interested in their credit card, but you're interested in what they want to accomplish. Number two, it tells them that you're willing to help them and number three, it tells them that it's possible. Otherwise, why would you be talking about their goals, right? You know, well, what is it that we want to accomplish with your business? Let's sit down and write it out. So that's what it says to them on a psychological level. You get that list of goals. You get them dreaming. Draw the dream. That's absolutely right, Elias. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to get them to write out a list of resources. This is the second part of their homework. What are resources? Resources, my friends, are names. They're going to give you that list of names of people that they are going to pre-launch their business with to get in front of the opportunity. we got to get eyeballs on the presentation stat. It's got to happen right away. I don't care what the closing ratio are. I don't care. You know what? I used to be like an 8% closer. I was horrible for years, but I played the numbers and the numbers got me where I wanted to go. I put enough eyeballs on the presentation and the eyeballs on the presentation was what got me to my first six figure income in this industry and then went far beyond that. And so you've got to get that list of resources that you guys are going to sit down and talk to. And if it's 10 people, guess what's going to happen? They're going to get to the end of those 10 names and if it didn't work out so well, which it's probably not because they're not going to be very good yet at using your script or your system, it's going to take a while, then they're going to quit. So you got to have a big list of resources and you need to have that conversation with them and say, hey, look, you know what? 
Let's come up with a list of about 100 names. Now, we're not going to really try to market to all these people. What we're going to do is practice on them. So because you're probably going to be bad at the beginning, we need a lot of names to talk to. All right. So let's get a big list of resources. And here's the cool thing about it. If you get a copy of that list of resources and for any reason they chicken out or peter out or decide that they don't want to do it or get cold feet or don't ever end up coming up with the money, guess who's got the list of resources? You do, my friends. Now you have got their list of names and phone numbers, and that's a whole new lead list for you. So first thing, get the list of goals. Second thing, get that list of resources. The third thing is you get a party at their house on the calendar. I don't care if you're selling Mary Kay. I don't care if you're selling shakes. I don't care if you're selling energy drinks. I don't care if you're selling skincare. I don't care if you're selling travel. I don't care if you're selling cell phones uh, or voice over internet protocol boxes. I don't care if you're selling wheatgrass shots. I don't care what it is you're selling. You get a party scheduled at their house. And you're going to sit down with them and call through that list of resources, and you're going to help them fill that party. Some of you guys are sending your people out to the wolves by themselves, and they don't know what to do. And they're calling their lead list, and you're like, hey, if you need any help, call me. Wrong answer, my friends. you got to be there on the phone with them, sitting beside them, making those dials, helping to fill that party. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to show up at their house on Tuesday night at 7 and nobody be there? Because that's what's going to happen to you, and then you're going to be frustrated, and they're going to feel guilty And they're going to feel like it's their fault when it actually was your fault as their sponsor because you didn't sit down and make the dials with them. You've got to go to war with your new people, all right, when you're pre-launching their business. So number one, their list of goals. We talked about the psychology of that. Number two, the list of resources, names and phone numbers. You need a big list, a huge one. Number three, you schedule a party at their house that you help them fill. And then number four, here's what you got to tell them. You got to say, hey, listen, if at any point you miss any part of this homework, I'm going to have to cut you loose. I'm going to have to sever the ties and we're going to go our separate ways. Doesn't mean that there's going to be a loss of friendship, but the business relationship will be over because I don't want to waste your time and I certainly don't want to waste mine. Neither one of us has time for that. So if you're serious about pre-launching this business, these are the hoops that you have to go through. So that's what I have done through the years whenever I've pre- I learned this technique probably about 11 or 12 years ago. And uh, man, it works like a charm. And I have pre-launched a lot of people's businesses who said that they didn't have the money, but they were really really serious about the business. Now, I will be honest with you. There are not very many people who have told me that they didn't have the money who really didn't have the money. Almost all of them could have found the money. Like I said well ago, they'll find the money to go drinking. They'll find the money to buy cigarettes. They'll find the money to uh, eat steak dinners. They'll find the money to get tattoos. Whatever their vices are, they'll find money for that. The reason they won't find money for this is Uh, if they're the kind of people that live paycheck to paycheck, is because they don't believe in it yet. See, their mindset is this, you guys. The, The prospect mindset is, is this simple? Does it work? And can I do it? That's what they want to know. And if they're not sure, if they're confused in any way as to whether they can be successful or not, a confused mind is always going to say no. And they're sitting there thinking, man, I live paycheck to paycheck. I don't have an extra three, four, five, six, eight hundred, however much it is to join your opportunity. They don't have a whole lot of money sitting there to invest, right? And so they're kind of counting the cost and asking themselves this question. Well, geez, what am I really willing to go scrape together the money to get started for something that might not work? That's what they're thinking. And they're wondering if it's going to work for them. Is it simple? Does it work? And can I do it? That's what they want to know. Is it simple? Can I? Uh, does it work? And can I do it? And so that's the reason why you get people that say that they don't have the money. Most of them actually could put their hands on the money in some way. I was broke when I decided to go all in in the network marketing industry, and I had to borrow the money. And um, man, that was my 18 months later. I was sitting on top of a six-figure income for the very first time, and I was one of those people that had to borrow the money because I was broke. So occasionally, I do come across people. I do come across people sometimes that are legitimately broke. They really don't have the money, and they don't have a source that they can borrow from. These are the people where you say, well, listen, I don't want to waste your time. 
and I don't want to waste mine. So I need to know, are you really serious about starting your home-based business? Do you really like what we've got here? And are you serious about it and you don't have the money? Or is it that you're not so serious and you just don't know how to tell me? Because feel free to tell me that you're just not in, that it's something that you don't want to do. And I'm cool with that. We can part ways, happy campers, and neither one of us has to worry about a phone call tomorrow. And if they say, no, 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 I really am serious. I do like the business. I want to get going. When you put them through this homework that I just gave you, when you make them give you that list of goals, that list of resources, and sit down and make phone calls with you and book that party at their house, this is going to tell you if they are really serious or not. This is going to, um, Graciela, yeah, Danny teaches some of the stuff. She's not the only one. This is, um, she's a great coach, and there are a lot of great coaches that teach these kind of methods. I've been using these, man, for a long time, and she does use that line, you know, are you really serious? I've heard her say that before. Um, are you serious or is it that you're not so serious? And here's how you know that they're serious. See, they're going to tell you in that moment, oh yeah, I'm really serious. I want to make some money. But how they're going to really tell you they're serious is, do they give you their list of goals? Do they give you their list of resources with phone numbers, names and phone numbers? Do they book that party and sit down with you and make those dials to fill that party? Now you know if you really have a business partner on your hands or not. And... It, makes, it determines your calendar. So either that person was serious and they book up your calendar, which is a great thing, or they weren't so serious and they free your calendar up, which is also a good thing. So either way, it's a good thing. I don't want you guys going into this thinking that this is a technique that is designed to twist people into getting them to do what you want to do, right? It's not some piece of psychology that gets them to, you know, somehow magically upgrade themselves into this amazing business builder. What it's desi designed to do is to get them on the fence or off the fence. That's what it's designed for. It's designed to get them on the fence or off the fence. So if you guys will use that technique when you're doing home parties or even if you're, you know, hitting the phones, if you're doing it with dials and you run a call across somebody and you're asking the closing questions and they're like, oh yeah, it's awesome. I love this about your product and I think it's helping people and I could really see myself and oh, I'd love to make some money. Well, great. Where did you see yourself getting started? One, two, or three? And they go, uh, well, uh, then you know what's coming. You know it's coming. Well, I don't really have the money. That's what's coming. And when they say they don't have the money, now you know how to address it because you can say, hey, listen, Bob, or hey, listen, Sherry, uh, let me ask you a question. Is it that you really are serious? And you can anchor that word right there. Is it that you really are serious and that you don't have the money? Or is it that you're not really serious and you just don't know how to tell me? Because I'd rather just save us both some time and not have to have a weird phone conversation tomorrow. You acting like you want to do this. So just shoot me straight. And if they're, oh, no, 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 I really am serious. Now you know what to do. And remember the mindset of the prospect. Don't go into selling mode here. Don't go into selling. And that's what some of you guys want to do. All of a sudden, you want to go into selling them on why they need to come up with the money and how they could come up with the money. And, and I'm telling you guys, that's a mistake, in my opinion. I think that that's a mistake. I think what you do in that, that point in time is you go in with the big boom and you say, hey, listen, since you've said that you are serious and you really don't have the money, I'm going to give you some homework. And if at any point in time you don't follow up on the homework and you don't do your part, then I'm going to have to cut the relationship right there because I don't want to waste your time and I don't want to waste mine. Is that fair enough? Is that fair, Sherry? Is it fair to you that if I'm going to invest my time in you to get you started in your business and you're not putting the money up front, that at least we can get some hoops for you to walk through? Should I push harder if I want them on my team really bad, even if they say not really interested? Uh, Mike, I am not a fan of pushing people hard. And I'm going to tell you why. Your upline, and, listen, and I'm not talking about your upline leader and your opportunity. When I say this, I'm saying in general. Your upline leaders always want you to push hard because their paycheck is attached to your success. Mm, I'm going to say that again. They're always going to try to get you to do all kinds of little tricks to push people hard because their paycheck is attached to your success. Don't ever forget that, my friends. That's the reason I always went and found independent trainers. I spent more time with independent trainers than I did with people in my upline. Why? Is it that my upline people were not good people? Nope, they're good people. It's just that they're people and their egos are involved and their paychecks are involved. 
That's why I do not coach and, and very historically did not drive my people to my upline leaders. The last company that I was a part of when I made a big run, I pushed my people to upline leadership and I've regretted it every single day since I started doing it. So I don't remi- I, I don't recommend pushing hard on people to get in your business because our industry already has a bad reputation for that. You guys hear me? The industry network marketing already has a bad reputation of pushing on people. Why do you want to tarnish the reputation further? Is it really worth a fifty or a hundred dollar commission check to push somebody into something that they really don't want to do in hopes that there's like that less than one percent chance that they're going to blossom and turn into a rock star for you? It's not worth it, my friends. It's not worth it. You go attract people into your business that want to be here. I'm going to tell you what, the techniques that I've taught you guys tonight about, hey, listen, is it that you really don't have the money, but you're serious about starting the business, or is it that you're not really that serious, you just don't know how to tell me? I've used that for so many years. I'm going to tell you what, when I've had those people, let me listen to me from your hearts here for a second. When you have those people like the single mom who's broke, When you've got that dad who really is a great husband and a great dad, but he's out of a job and he's willing to work hard, but he can't find work and he's desperate. When you find those kind of people, not the lazy bums of the world, not the entitlement people, but the people who are willing to work hard because they're desperate. See, that's where Nate Ridgway was. Nate, see, Nate Ridgway wasn't the $2 million earner back in those days. I wasn't the guy who'd made a half a million dollars in social media marketing. I wasn't the guy that was doing real estate deals all over the place. I wasn't that guy. I was the desperate guy. I was the guy that was desperate. I hated my life. I hated my situation. I hated my work hours. I hated the amount of money that I was bringing in. I hated the fact that I wasn't provided for my family the way I wanted to. I did not like my situation and yet I was broke and could not afford it. See, I've been that guy and I know how hard that guy's willing to fight. And when you find somebody that's willing to work that hard because they see it, why would you want to twist the arm of somebody that doesn't see it? Why would you want to do that? Don't do it. Go find the guy like me who sees it and says, "Mm, I can do that. I don't know how, but there's money there and I need it and I'm going to go work hard. Go find those people. And if they don't have the money, pre-launch their business and say, hey, listen, you're telling me that you're serious and I'm about to invest some time into you. Is it fair for me to say, I want you to jump through some homework hoops? It's the same homework hoops that I would require of any other new uh, person. But here's the deal. If at any point in time you mess up on the homework, I'm going to have to cut ties on the business relationship here because now you're showing me that you're not so serious. Bob, is that fair to you? Does that seem fair? And look him dead in the eye and ask him with a smile. Don't be a jerk about it, right? Look him in the eye as a, as a businesswoman or a businessman and say, Bob, does that make sense to you? Is that fair? Does that seem fair to you? And when he says, yeah, that seems fair, say, great, it's very simple. Number one, we're going to work through your goals. Number two, we're going to make that list of resources. I need names and phone numbers of people we're going to talk to because this business ain't going to build itself. Right, Bob? You and I are going to build this business together. Number three, get out your calendar because we are about to put a home party to share your business with people that you know on the calendar. And I will tell you this. When people say to me something like this, well, uh, maybe sometime like in a couple of weeks, I say, sorry, that doesn't work for me. Let's go ahead and get your calendars out. What do you have available in the next four to seven days? Guys, you, I'm not coaching you to be bossy, but I'm coaching you to have a little posture. Why? Because that new person has fear and you've got to be the one that can stand in faith on their behalf and help them make the decisions that they need to make. Guess what? My kids do not want to brush their teeth when they first get up in the morning, but they need to brush their teeth. So when I go wake them up, the first two things I tell them to do is, it's time to get up, brush your teeth, and make your bed. They don't want to do either one, but they are not allowed to come to the breakfast table until they've brushed their teeth and made their bed. They don't want to do it, and I say it with love, and I say it with a smile, and I give them a little pat on the leg, but I say it, you're right, Graciela. I say it with authority. I'm authoritative. I look at them and say, it's time to get up now brush your teeth, make your bed, and I'll see you at the breakfast table. I say it with love and compassion and a smile on my face, but with authority. And there's nothing wrong with you when they are like, 
oh, okay, we got to do a party at my house. Um, well, you know, I think I've got something the first week of November. Sorry, Bob, that doesn't work for me. Do you have your calendar handy? Let's go ahead and pull that out and see what you've got in the next four to seven days. Let's both look for some white space and find a place that's common in our calendars. You guys feeling me there? Yes, you've got to have a little posture. I love that word, authoritative, Graciela. That's a great word. So I hope that that adds value to you guys when you're out prospecting and you find somebody who says, hey, I really am serious, but I don't necessarily have the money.